Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Happy Wednesday. It's halfway through the week. I hope you're feeling really good. Um, my name is Idara Ekpa. I am going to be your host today, and I am joined by visual artist Sarandon. Um, Sarandon, how are you feeling today? I am good. I'm a little <laughs> nervous, but I'm excited to to get into some stuff. No, we're going to get you. We're going to get through it. Don't worry. <laughs> so. gonna, okay, good. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to be joined by Sarandon today where he plans to show us some of the designs, creative ad designs that he has that he'll do through Photoshop. So really, really excited to see what we have today. If you are in the chat, please go ahead and let me know where you are, you know, visiting from, where you're viewing from. Um, I'm calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Sarandon, where are you at? I am in LA. LA, the big it LA. It is sunny, yeah. <laughs> It is sunny. We had like a wind situation yesterday. We did like, too here in okay, Arizona. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. the wind, but then I forget how dusty the city is. So yeah. it gets, I'm like, I got to close my windows. <laughs> yeah, no, same thing happened here. <laughs> um, but real quickly, if you all are over on YouTube land, please make your way over to Behance. That way you can join the conversation. It is b.net slash Adobe Live. And um, just some few things for y'all. Make sure you join us this week for the creative encores of the Photoshop Creative Challenges every morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, this week, our challenges are all logo themed. So you want to make sure that you join. That way you can learn how to create and use um, logos in the app. And then if you miss Kyle T. Webster's brush hour this morning, don't worry. You can check out the replay on Behance or you can go to YouTube um, and also make sure that you check out the spring 2022 brush set. So I want to give you guys that kind of notice real quickly before we get started. But I'm going to make my way over to the chat. I want to know where you guys are calling from. So um, I see Pearl or uh, Carol, she's calling from South Florida. I'm seeing Stone from Iowa. Let's see, what else we got? Kyle from Dallas. Okay. D-Town, that yeah. is where I'm from. <laughs> Dallas, <Yeah>. Garland, Texas. <laughs> Um, Tim calling from um, Northern Michigan. That is really dope. Welcome everybody. Really excited to have you today. Um, so Saranda, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, tell the people who you are. Go ahead and show us some of your work as well. Um, I think it'd be really cool to kind of see, you know, what you got going on for us today. All right. All right. Well, my name is Sarandon. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Sarandon. I am a visual artist, photographer, and filmmaker based out here in Los Angeles. Born and raised in Dallas. Um, yeah, I specialize in, in photography and video. I direct projects. I shoot videos. I am very inspired by anime, nostalgic cartoons, mm. like the, the Nickelodeons and the Disney channels of the world, but also uh, Japanese film and Korean films. And I just really love world building. So that's something I try to tap into oh, my work wow. and my videos. So um, yeah, this is kind of like highlights is just some of the favorite videos that I've created on my website. Um, really try to dive into fantasy and things like that. Um, and I guess it's kind of become a thing for myself because I'm an independent creator and I, mm -hmm. I self produce a lot of my projects. I'm very hands on with them. So I'm kind of putting together like a lot of effects and stuff on my own and that's kind of what's really put me in the like position that I'm in to be able to create like ads and things like that that we'll be doing today so these are some of my video work um my photo work if it wants to load this is a short film I actually did wow. um, my first short film called here comes the bride sorry if y'all are like queasy and stuff it's probably like what <laughs> But uh, it's really cool thriller horror film. Stream it. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, also, I cosplay Speed Racer and all that stuff. So I took those. But yeah, I just I love playing with color. I love um, creating quirky things, fun yeah. shoes and um, just having fun. I think art should be fun. I think what you should create yeah. should be fun. And um, 
sometimes that's that's all I want people to take away from it. It's just like, oh, this was fun and colorful and I had a great mm. time. So I love that. I love that. Sometimes I don't know. I feel like for me, art is a sense of escape um, from like the real world. So that fantasy and, and, and being able to create art just to create is really, really dope. So make sure y'all go ahead and head over to his website to check out more of his work, head over to his YouTube so you can watch that short film as well. And then also go to Instagram, give your boy a follow. Okay. Yes, follow me on the gram. There's <laughs> more content on here. I haven't been able to update some things on my site because I'm just like in the middle of stuff. So I've got some cool stuff on here on TikTok, on Instagram, where I give a little bit deeper dive into my creative process. Again, I'm very hands-on in what I do. So I've been trying to be a lot more sharing with that, especially with like the TikTok reels yeah. of the world and stuff like that. Follow me and, you know, again, stream the film. So. Yes, stream the film, stream the film. All right, Saran, and so what do you have planned for us today? Let's go ahead and hop right in. All right, so today, we're going to be creating a spec ad for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance SP. And yes. <laughs> Some people are like, I don't know what that is. And that's why I created a presentation. So let's do this. <laughs> um, so the Game Boy Advance SP, I think we all should know like what the Game Boy is. Um, it is a council that was created by Nintendo on February 14, 2003. Um, this is actually a redesigned version of mm. the Game Boy Advance, which was released two years prior to that. But the thing with the Game Boy Advance SP that was so cool was that it was the first console or Nintendo console to have a backlight, and it also had a rechargeable battery. Mm. I definitely had a Game Boy Advance, and my mom would like always <laughs> scream at me for taking the batteries out of the remote or wherever I could when I was running out of batteries. And then, of course, the classic when you're in the car at night and you ask your parents if you can turn the light on in the car mm -hmm. and they're like, you can't, I can't do that, I can't see. <laughs> but I'm like, I need to play Pokemon. So Nintendo responded to that and they created the Game Boy Advance SP. Mm -hmm. um, some things about the Game Boy Advance SP that was so interesting. First, the SP stands for special, um, mm -hmm. but I felt just through something that always fascinated me about the device, especially looking back at it now, is that it really represented a change in time. 2003 mm. was when the tech revolution was starting to happen. The flip phones, Motorola razors, sidekicks, mm -hmm. things were just becoming a lot more trendy, especially with cellular devices. They weren't blocky and all of that stuff that we saw in like the 90s and stuff yeah. like that. And to me, I felt like this was Nintendo's take on what was happening in trend and pop culture. So as we see, it's a flipping device now, very similar to what the phones looked like back then. It was sleek. The color palette was very uh, mm -hmm. minimal, very pastel. It was sexy. It was a very yeah. sexy device. And you could tell in the advertising, like the top right corner was the Game Boy Advance ads, which a lot of them looked like that very much for the kids. But when they brought out the SP, it became a lot more sophisticated, a lot more editorial. Mm -hmm. They definitely still had the kind of kid focused ones, but they had these like cheeky adult lines, second best thing to do in the dark type stuff. And you're <laughs> just like, okay, like who is this for? So it was very interesting to see their take on it. Um, the product performed very well. It sold 31.79 million units in the first year. Mm. It was very well received. All my friends had it. I didn't get it. I had the advance still, but um, I was always, you know, jealous about that. So I created a mood board um, because, again, the marketing for this device was so diverse. What I want to do with the two days that I'm with you guys is I'm going to be creating three ads inspired by kind of the different takes of marketing that Nintendo did with the device. So today we're going to take more of a route on the top left and the bottom right, which okay. is more kid centric. It's very much something that you would have saw if in a Game Informer or like Nintendo magazine type thing mm -hmm. that's for kids. It's super campy, super colorful, lots of like zigzaggy stuff going on and then tomorrow we're going to take a more like sophisticated e fashion -y mm. approach to it um that kind of plays off of more of the uh the design on like the bottom left corner and the second one here um so yeah that's what we're doing we got one today it's action-packed i think you guys are gonna like it and um 
can we proceed to Photoshop? We can, we can proceed to Photoshop. I'm really excited. I remember a Christmas. I don't remember how old I was, but um, this was back in the day when like my parents actually tried to surprise us with gifts. Mm -hmm. And I had had like the original game, the original Game Boy, I had a pink one for the longest time. And when once one Christmas, I ran downstairs, opened up a box and an SP was sitting there and I like wanted to cry. <laughs> oh, so you got one. I got one. Ah. SP girl, I got one. <laughs> Man, it was pink. I don't know what, what I did with it or where it is now. I think it might have destroyed it, but it was like my prized possession growing up. They're so sleek. They're so cool. I brought, I have mine on deck here today. Yes. This is the one I bought for this. So um, yeah, it's, it's fun. So for day one, we're doing one of the images again because I felt like it's a bit more heavy lifting on it. Okay. Um, we're going to focus more on kind of the compositing aspect. So what I did was with the files, let's get them open. These are images that I took. I haven't done much of anything on them. I just did some of the contrast a little bit. So this is what it looked straight off the camera. And okay. I cleaned up like some of the dust and just mm -hmm. okay. 20 something years of age that that <laughs> SP has probably had. So that's what I've done with each image. Um, the concept for this one is going to be called New Stage, Same Classics. So I'll kind of get more into each image here in just mm. a moment. So essentially what we're going to do with this concept is this Game Boy Advance SP is going to be a stage mm, and okay. I'm going to be compositing myself on it and we're going to have the classic games, like their classic titles shooting out of the device to really represent that even if you, this isn't, that it's a re redesign. You mm -hmm. can still play all the games that you've already invested in on your SP. We're just getting a prettier package and something with a light. Okay. So that's what this image is. I'm gonna do some warping and stuff to really give it a larger than life vibe. This is me doing like some crazy pose. <laughs> I don't really get into my like, my, <laughs> my game or vibe um i gotta like we're gonna get rid of the the dallas cowboy star i just really like that hat <laughs> i wanted to like hold my game boy Vance as like a little easter egg that's actually the one uh... i've had my whole life so um just as a way of like transitioning from this device to the new one i yeah. gotta like fix my sleeve and like I noticed I don't like the dark in my socks, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, um, cool. We're gonna cut me out, put me on the Game Boy. And then as you saw in the ads, like each Game Boy Advance ad, like they always had like a little Game Boy in the corner with the logo. So what we're gonna do with this one is cut it out and we'll end up putting it as a little logo on the ad. Okay, I'm excited. How often um, do you, um kind of add yourself to your projects because I see you got you today how often are you kind of the subject in your photos in your composites as well I do it quite often and it's more it's always come out of a way of necessity initially mm. like when I was learning it and learning this process um I had no proof of concept so I would yeah. reach out to people especially when I moved to LA I'd be like oh hey I want to do this and they would go on my page and I just look like a kid from Dallas so <laughs> It was a way for me to also like be able to prove like, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And also I have fun with it. I feel like I've kind of been doing it less, especially like this year, like the past six months. Um, mm -hmm. But I really enjoy doing it when I want to try something different or try something mm. experiment. Like okay. I'm just a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I yeah, love that. So I love that. And then real quickly, if y'all have any questions, it seems like the chat is pretty excited <laughs> about this hope today. I don't, hope I don't fail y'all. You will not. Okay. <laughs> you will not, <laughs> Sarandon. You will not at all. I can already tell we're already on to a good, a good start. Um, but if y'all have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I'll make sure that I read them off. So then that way we can make sure this is as engaging as it can be. And then if you are over on YouTube land, yes, I know I love YouTube too, but come over to be here b.net slash adobe live that way you can join the conversation and ask any questions all right sarandon go ahead take it away all right so first thing we're gonna do um is i want to align and kind of like straighten out this game boy before mm -hmm. we really start doing it there's also some hard shadows on this side that i want to kind of clean up i had to put the game boy on like this clear case just 
mm. the way the joints of it go, like it only snaps at certain angles. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna kind of clean that up and then we'll really get into like distorting it and warping it and everything there. So let's get this crop tool together. I always shoot, when I shoot, I'm very, I like the Hype Williams, like mm -hmm. fish eye distorted thing. So mm -hmm. usually I shoot at like a wider angle or wider, wider focal length okay. and um, I'll get closer to the subject. So it kind of mm -hmm. has that distorted vibe, but yeah, it always bites me in the, you know, comes and bites <laughs> me back in the butt because things just like, no matter how much I want it to look leveled out, it won't be because it's distorted. Yeah. Um, and also, I think my head's a bit crooked, so I never. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, no. I don't trust my head. It always leans on the side, so that too. Um, and it's just done it so much that I'm like, I, I'm looking at like I'll look at the camera when we're talking. I'm just like straighten. That's my thing coming out crooked. You shouldn't have to do all this. Um, <laughs> so that looks. Uh. Nah, he's still kind of tilting a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Let's see. Sometimes I'll do this ruler tool. Let's see. Mm. I've never used the ruler tool. It was like a trick I saw online because I just really wanted to straighten out a picture. Mm -hmm. And um, it comes in handy. You just kind of like line it up with what you are trying to make level I always just try to get really close to it and mm -hmm. then you can go to image rotate and you do arbitrary and the algorithm will be like well it should be like ah. that for some reason that still looks crooked to me but <laughs> we'll play with it a little bit if I can just get it like one mm. pixel one <laughs> pixel <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see, I'm gonna check in. Okay, yeah, don't want to go past like 0. 0.6. We may just do with it. Um, so let's see here, I'm like losing people. Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't like when I get that close. <laughs> wow, Photoshop. Oh, were... okay. Oh, right. Right. It's like, okay. <laughs> All right, we're back. So actually that looks pretty good. I just want to make sure I feel a little bit more in the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So obviously there's like nothing land over there. So I'm a big content aware fiend. It's probably like one of my favorite features of yeah. Adobe. Um, and if you don't know what content aware is, basically it will take what surrounding it and just get mm -hmm. us and be like, well, that should be there. So yeah, I like that. That looks good. Um, I'm gonna try to do content aware. I'm not mad at this shadow as okay. I'm more so kind of mad at like this one, but- Got it, okay. Let's see if content aware will do its thing. Let's see, okay. You kind of got to give it some passes. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, what I may do is get a little bit more so mm, it knows okay. what it needs to look at. Okay, we're getting close. If it gets close enough, I may just um, use the clone stamp. Clone, yeah, too. the clone stamp too to kind of clean up the rest of it. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, it's getting there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's starting to lose some detail. Um, actually, I don't look too bad, but mm -hmm. what I may do, let's just see. Uh, I'll do it on the thing. Uh, yeah, I really love I that. Some... I really love the content aware um, tool in Photoshop. It just makes things so much easier. When I, before I figured it out, I was trying to like clone and like extend mm -hmm. things and uh, it was just never accurate. <laughs> and then I was exactly. like, oh wait, <laughs> there's a whole tool for that. And it just, it really, it, it really opens up your, I don't know. I feel like it allows you to even be, think a little bit even bigger than what you mm -hmm. may have like on set at that moment. Cause you're mm -hmm. like, I can expand this exactly what exactly. I want to do. Um, it's a great feature. So that looks much better. Um, I'm also, I've always been like a pastel 
theme, mm. like, but I purposely bought just to kind of go off of this like era and time too. But I was like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy like this really heavy blue like backdrop and really just try something different. But mm -hmm. I, it was so fun like shooting on a like darker color. Um, it definitely like affects the light and stuff a lot differently mm -hmm. than I thought. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool with that. So what I'm gonna do, again, I really wanna warp this bottom base cause I want it to feel like we're on it and I want it to feel really like larger than life. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to just duplicate this for safety. I'm gonna call you clean up. See, Sarandon um, names his layers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't, but I made a point. <laughs> I made a point that I was gonna do it for this because I was like, people are gonna be like, oh no. And it's, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I made a point that I was gonna do it for this. It's, cause it's, it's so funny because like every Adobe Live that I do, like whoever I'm hosting with is struggling with naming because it's like, we're all telling ourselves, let's name the, the, the layers so that way whoever's watching can follow along. Cause I don't do it personally either, mm -hmm. but then it's like, oh, when people are watching, they need to be able to follow too. To follow along. <laughs> and then also when things get like real messy and that's yes. when I'm always like, okay, I should have did this. Cause mm -hmm. then I'm trying to like hide stuff, unhide stuff, trying to figure out yeah like uh i just need the one with just my foot or whatever yep. and i'm just like <laughs> uh which one was that um it's great it's i don't know i feel like it's just one of those things like if it, it's like laying out your your clothes before the next day like mm -hmm. it's great when you do it when you wake yeah. up and you're like i don't have to think about what to wear mm -hmm. um so yeah i'm just I use quick selection. I, I probably should have tried it, but I think this is a bit more precision because yeah. I've got to essentially, I'm going to have to realign this joint with, um, with the top of the, the Game Boy. So okay. to me, I feel like just doing the, uh, the pen tool is probably mm -hmm. better. Yeah. I personally just use pen tool all the time, but I know it takes a lot more time, mm -hmm. but, um, I just know exactly what I'm going to get and I don't have to do a lot of like redefining or re yeah refining it and yeah unselecting stuff so i don't know i'm going a little closer yeah it definitely helps to keep things as precise as possible you have a little bit more control there exactly so almost there with them luckily this is just a square so it just kind of makes it easier uh, drag you about right here I'm not too concerned about the base because I think it's going to end up being out of frame because okay. we're just going to enlarge it so much. So I'm just going to go straight across. Okay, so that should be good. So let's make a selection. Actually, before I do that, um, I'm going to just make sure it's i put my feather at zero and then just check this. So this is okay. what we're looking at. Um, I'm just gonna smooth the edges a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. That looks good. Cool. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring these people back here and we can inverse the selection, get rid of everyone else. And then I'm just going to do some distortion. It's probably, again, one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. on here, but I'm going to essentially drag oh, this out okay. here and just got to be careful to make sure these look even on the yeah. bottom. So it kind of makes it look more like a fisheye. Mm -hmm. And what I like about the store is that it doesn't mess with the other end. So everything's still lined up the way it's yeah. supposed to be. Um, I'm just making sure. Oop, now I'm trying to move you now. <laughs> um, making sure that it's that. And then let me see what perspective will do. Oh, nope. I don't think I'm gonna mess with perspective. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, it's not doing what I want. Yeah, I'm good with that. Um, I fish actually, if I can make it go down a little bit, let me see what skew may do. Mm -hmm. 
that. I kind of want to get a little bit less of the game. There we go. So 19.4. Let's see here. It's probably as close as don't get. That distortion was so cool. Like my mind is still not over. <laughs> it, makes, it just makes such a difference. Like it's, already, it's a huge difference. And like, it's just a cool tip. Like it does mimic a fisheye lens. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am like speechless almost. I'm like, oh, I've never like thought to distort something in an image to mimic um a fish island so that is just like so dope but i can already see how it makes it more like lifelike mm -hmm. um so oh okay yay no i'm glad you're liking it. Oh. working out um, <laughs> it's so working out so far right we're we're at a good point with the game boy for right now so what i'm going to do is work on me I need to work on me in real life too, but um, <laughs> for this, <laughs> I need to work on me. Um, so again, I want to like clean up my sleeve mm -hmm. and fix this sock situation and stuff mm -hmm. before I really uh, start cutting myself out. So we should be able to do the sock. This should just be like a simple um, quick select or time uh, clone stamp. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to like take a piece of my sock and just like paint over it. Did you shoot all this at home or do you have a studio space you usually go to? Um, I actually shot this at home. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been trying to not shoot at home as much anymore just cause I'm like, you know, trying to elevate. But mm -hmm. I was like, we're gonna do this at the crib. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I have some lights and luckily my space is big enough to where it's mm -hmm. like, I can lay it out like that. Um, this one's gonna probably be a little bit more tricky because yeah. of the way it shapes. shapes so yeah. what I'm gonna do, this is actually a trick I do quite often when I'm just trying to like match an edge or create something that was never there is I'm just going to trace it and just get enough information from it. And then- Are you gonna rotate it? Rotate a mask. Oh, that is it. so smart. So- That is so smart. Let's see here. It's hard to see the vision um, right now, but I'm gonna mask this. I'm just trying to, um, that may work. Cause I'm really just taking this first piece, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's see what this mask does. So, and then my brush, let's just see what happens here. Yeah, that doesn't match. I probably just did a bad grab for it so let's do that again i'm just i probably took too much information from it mm, okay so i'm just gonna start with the scene and then we can just go from there yeah, so yeah. this and then again like warping and stuff yeah that's working yeah and then let's just warp that is so smart you down thank you so I'm like that and then I can use the clone stamp to kind of fill in the gaps I'm trying to get those mm -hmm. lines to match it's always like a helpful way yeah to I probably distorted it a bit too much um and also I'm gonna be like this big so mm -hmm. I've been trying to remind myself about like final results because yeah. I'm like honestly I'm going to probably be so small in this image that no one's going to see this but mm -hmm. it's like that TikTok that nobody's gonna know um <laughs> so, so I'm just no, like, it's like as artists sometimes you have to remind yourself that like Sometimes these little details may not matter to the, you know, whoever's viewing the image, but at the same time. But you're like, but I know it's But there. I know it's there. <laughs> I was watching a think piece situation or analyst mm -hmm. uh, uh, breakdown of Toy Story. And um, it was really interesting with the first movie because when they went to Pizza Planet, mm -hmm. that was, I believe, the only time in the film that you saw a full body character that wasn't Andy. Mm. And they were like, I guess it was because it was like 1999 or whatever, 1995 or something when that movie came out, they mm -hmm. didn't have the bandwidth to be able to um, create all of those characters. So mm -hmm. it was darkly lit on purpose to oh, hide wow. the detail. And if you look at, if you watch the movie again, you'll notice like, 
I don't know. You'll just notice the kids look a little off. Like they're not very fluidy feeling or anything. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to see if I can content aware this and see if it'll mm -hmm. like if give it'll... me some of that detail. Yeah, that looks better. I just got to replace some more color on it. I'm going to merge all these layers. This is why I'm talking. This is that's this is when you just <laughs> stop. This is when you're like, I'm going to go rogue. I'm not naming the layer. Like, we just don't figure this out real quick, but I'll merge all of this so it looks a lot cleaner. I finished. Uh. <laughs> so, Randy, we got a question for me, for you from yes. Eli. Um, so, Eli asks, um, I am very curious to know the creative process that went into the shoot. What sparked the idea and how it evolved? I've always, one of my goals in life is to work with Nintendo. I really want to do a project with them. Um, and... People will tell you different things about creating specs and like, you know, whatever. I know Nintendo probably won't see that. Well, let me not manifest that, but <laughs> they may see this and be like, let's fly you out to Japan or whatever. <laughs> um, but I really just wanted to create, I really just wanted to kind of live this fantasy of just creating something for them. Yeah. And I'd rather pick something that is 20 something years old than like a Nintendo Switch or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've, I've, I'm a big, I, I'm big on Tumblr. Like I'm always on Tumblr yes. and saving just ads. I just love how creative um, the, I just loved how creative advertisement used to be mm -hmm. um, in the 2000s and the 90s. Um, it was always just like really just catchy slogans and really mm -hmm. just out of the box concepts. So I just really mm -hmm. wanted to tap into that and just create something. And I'm a big fan of, um, vintage technology and things mm -hmm. like that so i thought oh well, what better to to do this what i'm yeah. doing is getting rid of my it's my dallas star. cowboy yeah. sign boom there where am go, i from please. i don't even know um <laughs> no offense to my other dallas you said, friends, you said dallas who <laughs> dallas who i'm from la born and raised I'm <laughs> la um yeah i think those are the big things here so i got rid of my star fixed my sleeve i fixed my sock um, so what we're going to do is I am going to use the quick selection tool for this because it's just like I'm doing way too much in this photo to try to pin around all this mm -hmm. and then we'll clean up around it. So just kind of grabbing myself here. Those and, shoes are. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say that, like, it's really important. Like, I know we're not going to manifest the negativity of you not getting to work with yeah. <laughs> Nintendo, you will want me one day. I'm gonna get my Nintendo check. <laughs> my Nintendo check. But sometimes, you know, you create the work that you like, you know, that that you want to hopefully be hired for one, and then also creating the work that you're most like connected to. Absolutely, yeah. and kind of to your point of when when you asked about like, oh, like you you're a subject in a lot of your work that was the basis of what a lot of that is, is mm -hmm. especially if I'm diving into a new genre of content. Um, a lot of people who hit me up now, like they want the campy, cartoony, mm -hmm. like, you know, th that kind of vibe of things. And sometimes I don't want to do that, but they don't know me for anything else because that's what I produce. Yeah. So it's like, well, if you want to make a gothic shoot, Sometimes you're just gonna have to invest in it yourself first yep. and really like put yep. it together. And um, I just think that's great. I just think that's a rule that anyone in any career mm -hmm. should follow is like, you really, I think there's a, a phrase called like attracts like, and I think that applies as creatives too. Like you gotta mm -hmm. kind of have to be what you are before you get to do it type exactly. thing. Exactly, exactly. So I'm like, you know, They'll see the potential. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly, exactly. And they'll be like, okay, like let's let's go and have them to promote this this Nintendo Switch or whatever. <laughs> um, Got to get my ears. Yes, the selection is working out thus far. Yeah, it's coming through. So I'm um, just kind of getting real close to get this detail in. Awesome. And then if you guys have any other questions for Sarandon, please be sure to drop it in the chat. Eli, thank you for that question. Try to make sure I'm not missing anything so far. I got a question for y'all. What were y'all's favorite game growing up? It doesn't have to necessarily be the um, the SP if you didn't play it or if you're like 12 <laughs> and you weren't born, you're a Gen Z and you're like, what's a Game Boy? <laughs> This old man is on this computer talking about stuff that like the dinosaurs played or whatever. I don't know. Um, 
I'm trying to remember what mine was. What was yours? I'm a big, so obviously <laughs> Pokemon was like, mm -hmm. Poke Hole, Pokemon Sapphire mm -hmm. had me down bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> down bad had me like run into my mom's room, <laughs> telling her like I caught whoever and she's just like, who are these people? Stop, like leave me alone. <laughs> um, but I loved, uh, Pokemon, I love Mega Man Battle Network. Mm -hmm. Mega Man had like an anime at the time that was like coming on, like mm -hmm. I think Fox Kids or something. But it was very much like he, like this kid would like log into the internet and be like Mega Man. So it was like he was ah. like two different people type thing. So I always loved that because in my head, there was always like a digital world. I'm a big Digimon fan too. Mm -hmm. So I was just waiting to just be like, I was waiting for my Digimon to come. And like, <laughs> take me out of Garland, Texas, and, you know, to fight some Digimon or something. Like, I, I just wanted that life so bad. Um, I still think they're real. I don't know. But <laughs> but that Mega Man game was was one of my favorite. Dragon Ball Z had a bunch of games mm -hmm. that I used to yeah. play. Yep. I love Dragon Ball Z. Um, yeah, I think those were my big phase. I, I, but I guess I, I think I spent the most time playing Pokemon because it, mm -hmm. it just takes that much to play that. It's a, it's yeah. really spent. Um, kind of like The Sims or whatever. Like. Yeah, I think Sims was for me. <laughs> Somebody even just put in here, um, Sims all day. I'm seeing um, played Pong. I don't know what Pong was, but hooked mm. it up to the TV, the home TV, and burnt the image of the tennis court into the screen. Oh, like ping pong. Yeah. Oh, oh ping, ping pong. pong. Yeah, like the oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's a uh, let's see. What else do I see in here? I see Home Alone, Pokemon. I see oh someone else. Alone. Yes, I didn't even know you could play. They had a game for everything back then. Wow. Like, franchise all day. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Somebody said, great job um, getting rid of the cowboy star and now replace it with the Texans bull. Oh, we are, no, we can't, we can't have that drama here. We cannot have that drama here today. Um, <laughs> let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Um, I think I'm missing some of my shoe here. See here. Ooh, Monopoly. Yes, I, I was a bit Monopoly girl that, too. That will start some drama. Like yep. that's how you really learn about some yep. people's Monopoly because we don't do loans. That is not. <laughs> nope. We do not do loans in Monopoly. That's when things get like real messy and drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Monopoly and like Uno, get those are some I'm games. A, oh, Uno is the game that if you want to fight. <laughs> yeah, like things get, yeah. It is not as, I don't show up as my best self when I play people, Uno. <laughs> people show their, they really show their true colors when they play oh, Uno. Oh man. <laughs> so I am all selected here. There's yes. some, there's probably some little things I'll need to do when I get over to here. So. Here we are, and now it's really about um, scale and just like, okay. you know, proportions. Mm -hmm. Not that you would ever be on a giant Game Boy, but <laughs> to me, what's really important is that I'm not covering anything that's like obviously signature to the product, not like totally yeah. covering it. So I'm probably gonna be blocking a couple things, but I can still tell there's like a button there and there's, mm -hmm. I don't wanna block the Game Boy Advance SP logo. So, um, let's see, I'm still a little too big. I like that size. I don't like standing on the volume and I'm kind of looking to my left. So I think I'm gonna do like right here. Mm. Yeah, I like that placement. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Looks like he is about to see some crazy stuff. <laughs> so it clearly does not look like I'm there. So we're gonna next really start focusing on like getting some shadows in. Yeah. Um, if I really want, I mean, I guess we'll go here. I, I can get rid of this little piece little from blue. the backdrop. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, somebody said they keep Uno cards on them all year round. I feel that. You never know. It it will bring, I mean, it'll really like light up a party. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't really matter where, just need a table and stuff. That's and I it. just learned spades. Oh, I finally, okay. Someone finally 
taught me spades because the thing about spades is like nobody wants to teach you mm -hmm. it's just like you you don't know spades oh well, you I don't, don't know time for you, right yeah go somewhere else we're about to play i'm not about i don't have patience or whatever but it was a christmas party and they did teach me spades and mm -hmm. um it was fun and it, also another game with quite a bit of drama because mm -hmm. you, you can lie in it so um <laughs> So what I'm gonna do, uh, for me to create shadows, I'm gonna duplicate myself and okay. we're just gonna make me into like a dark figure. So we're gonna go to curves and I'm just gonna bring it all the way down. So it's like, who's that Pokemon? <laughs> um, and I'm going to transform and essentially, first I'm just gonna bring it down like this mm. and then I'm obviously flipped so gonna like flip you so this is again like i'm this is really like the name the word of the day is like distort, distort. <laughs> actually you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna skew this first because i need my feet to match mm -hmm. um so that looks wow and then to really like shape my foot and stuff like that will distort it mm -hmm. i think i want to be a bit I want this to kind of come, I'm doing this like you can see, I really want it to come in an angle, mm -hmm. the uh, the shadow just to really help give that dynamic vibe. So yeah. let's see if I can skew you. No, he ain't gonna skew. So what I'll probably need to do is go to distort. Yep, there we go. And oh. all this shadow won't be here at the end, but it's just nice to get a good idea of what your scale is gonna be anyway. Yeah. Because it just, I don't know. It, it just works out somehow. Mm -hmm. So he's shifted enough to me for now. Yeah, like that. Um, what I'm doing is just, it's just a lot of like tweaking that. And then I'm gonna bring out the warp and we'll change the shape of the foot. So it like okay. locks in. So warp. We'll start with this foot. You're just kind of like bending it. Mm. Okay. And I'll eventually layer, put this layer under the foot, mm -hmm. but it's usually easier just to have it um, above for now. Yeah. This one may be a little trickier just because of the way it's shaped and I don't want it to mess with the other leg too much. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. Actually, yeah, actually, no, I'm not gonna duplicate it. Yeah, I am gonna duplicate it, but I'm gonna first, I'm gonna make this into a separate layer just so I can have a little bit more control. So we'll just do a cut and then I can just like transform this one a little bit more differently. So we'll warp it, uh, let's see here. Bring this foot in a little bit. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna warp it or rotate it. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, that looks good. And then I'm just gonna distort some more. Boom. And I'm gonna end up getting the brush tool and um, painting in some stuff that? too. Yeah. Okay. So it'll kind of connect a little bit better. Let me see if I can warp the top just so it. Yeah. There we mm. go. So, and we can fill in the blanks and do all of that, but that'll help. And granted, all of this isn't gonna be like super visible. We're gonna mm -hmm. mask out a lot of this and kind of blend it down. Um, what I really liked about the Nintendo ads back then as well, like they weren't so like fixated on practicality. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be, especially for like those 90s ads, like they don't have to be like you're looking at a, marvel film in regards to like shadowing and stuff like that so yeah. um it doesn't have to look like super duper perfect but obviously i want to look like i'm um connected to the uh to the game boy yeah so i'm just gonna like connect these dots a little bit that's eh, probably too big of a stroke there we go. PJ said, um, I broke up with a guy over a game of spades. I set him up and he said everything rude to me and I didn't need that. Even his mom picked up um, on the change of, on my change in attitude. 
Wow. Wow. It gets wow. You really do get to know people. Like wow. when, when the stakes are high, you really do oh, you get no. to know people. So I mean, I can understand maybe you yell out of frustration, but but say mean things. I mean, you know, it, it opens a can of worms. It yeah. opens up a can of worms, you know. I'm glad it happened over a game of Uno and not or game of spades and not like at the yeah, altar. You know? Exactly. Exactly. It's so much cheaper to do it before yeah. it's like <laughs> 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 Gotta find um, the silver lining and everything, you know? Exactly. Um, so I like where it's placed. So what I'm gonna do is um, first, just thinking of physics, because mm -hmm. this goes downward, this should actually shift a little bit. So I'm going to actually, let me combine these. So I'm combining and I'm also, y'all see, I, I can, ooh. ooh. Was not Merge layers. That. Merge layers. There you go. Um, <laughs> I'm not labeling things. So let's name me. This is when things start to get messy. So I'm like, let's let's just go ahead and <laughs> let's go ahead and uh and name it. So I'm gonna slide this shadow over just a bit just to kind of play off of the fact of the shape of the uh the game. And then I'm gonna take the bottom one and do the same. Let's slide them over. I don't really think, oops, I don't think this is going to even Show is he moving? Oh, I'm not doing the right thing. There we go. Let me do that again. Slide you and then get real close and we'll fill in the black. Keep doing that. Okay. Perfect. And now and also, actually, since this goes straight down, he should actually go straight down too. So let's transform you. Oh, I gotta. Should have did that on a separate layer. You know what? Before I do all that, I don't think it's gonna end up being visible when I mask it. So okay. what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of like clean up some of the leftover shadows. And then we're gonna blur this shadow down so it doesn't look so sharp. Okay. So let's just do this. And get my brush, get a little bigger. Okay. Boom. Just kind of fill that in. And then we're going to get the blur brush thingy magic. And I'm going to put it at like full power. And essentially, I'm just blurring the corners or the edges of the shadow just so they just don't look so sharp. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of repetitive. You're just kind of grazing it. I don't know if you can even tell on the screen. Yeah, I can see it a little bit. Okay. So yeah, really what it's doing is just blurring the edges of it. Yeah. Just so shadows aren't that sharp. Yeah, I can see it blurring. So do that a little bit longer. Kind of go fast at it. Mm. a few more strokes and then we'll blend it down but it already looks much more like a shadow yeah okay. yeah get a little closer here and then we'll mask this out. yeah it's already looking like a shadow this is actually really dope so you had made a a, a copy of yourself and then you used the um the curve. The curves to, mm -hmm. to make it dark and then you flipped it. Ah. Flip it and reverse it. Flipped it. Oh you know. <laughs> literally. Um, that's also I guess the the slogan of today. You just we're just flipping stuff. And um <laughs> what I'm doing now is we're gonna blend it or kind of like mask out. So none of this is really gonna show. I don't think it needs to be that I'm okay. the wrong one. Am I doing the right thing? Oh, I think my opacity is just really low. Oh, so what okay. I'm doing right now is just masking out. What color? Okay, I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> what I'm doing now, I'm just masking out some of the shadow. Mm -hmm. I don't have the opacity at 100% yet. Um, I really want it to kind of trail off. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be like barely visible here. I mean, it's at 82. So technically something's there, but mm -hmm. 
as we get closer to my feet, the shadow will be denser. So okay. try like 40 here. Yeah. And I, that's still like, I'm going to get rid of that a little bit more too. Um, but it's, sometimes it's kind of good to just like work your way into it. Mm -hmm. So it's like tap it a few more times. Get rid of a few little bit. And then let's go a little lower. Let's try like 12, let's see what 12 goes. Yeah. Yep. So I'm really just getting around my foot. Kind of coming closer. And really doesn't need much. There we go. So yeah, like the way that's like rolling off. So mm -hmm. just happen a little bit more. So that looks cool. Yeah. I think this a little bit. I could probably go a little harder on this foot. There we go. That'll do for now. I can always go back and probably blend it a little bit more in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to do as well, um, when you get close to the shadow, it still looks a little like separated. So yeah. I'm going to create a layer on top of myself. And we'll just call him like shadow two. And I'm just gonna get the black brush and paint over the base of my shoe. Oh, okay. Bit, just so it like kind of connects more. Um, oh, my opacity is a little low. That's probably not a bad idea. Let me try 76. And I usually will just like kind of go over it, not thinking too much, and then we'll like mask it just to kind of refine it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. That way they just look a little bit more connected. Oops. Boom. And then let's just create another mask. My brush. It just kind of give it a little bit more shape. Mm. And see what like some blending modes would do if they make any difference. Oh, I kind of like hard light. Um, let's see. Just add a little bit more right there. Bit. So we come out. Yeah, it looks a lot more connected. Yeah. And. Cool. I'm happy with that for now. <clears throat> what I'm also going to do is um, add a gradient to myself. So I'm okay. just going to go to blending, blending options. And essentially what this is just going to do is um, kind of add some shadows and add some like kind of more lighting for myself in here. So I just usually do like a black and white and then you should be darker on the bottom. Mm -hmm. the light's hitting me this way. So I'm trying to, it'll also help with blending in the feet mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. And then we just change the mode. Let's see which mode I need to do. Turn this opacity down some. Color burns a little too much. Okay. So you kind of just like look around. Oh, I kind of like light. Yeah, I like lighting. What's the opposite of light? And let's see what, like, no, that makes me way too bright. Hard light. Actually, kind of like hard light. Yeah. Um, Because it really just does a good job at, like, darkening me down there. Um, And then I can play with the scale a little bit. That looks good. And that'll just kind of help with kind of disguise and defeat a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So right now we are looking good. I'm going to also desaturate myself a little bit. So let's see here. Just so I fit a little bit in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. So we're here. So 
that looks good for now. Actually, no, one more thing I want to do with me. They were really big about adding an outer glow to everything mm -hmm. on those like Nintendo ads. So I want to add an outer glow to myself just to make me look really like I'm getting zapped into this thing. <laughs> I really love how much you pay attention to certain themes and um, things that you would see in ads. And, and when you're trying to recreate something, um, I don't know, just being able to pull from elements that the actual company does did include Mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really really dope thank you no i feel like that's what makes it like if you ever want to parody something or really mm -hmm. like that it's the little it's those little details yep. like um i was watching what was i watching like charlie's angels the, the cameron diaz like mm -hmm. lucy lou one and um when i watched it i was just like wow i can tell that the matrix like changed the game during mm -hmm. that era because everybody <laughs> was doing like those like camera move things that they were doing on the matrix. Yeah. It was just like everywhere. And I was like, wow, they really were like going to town on that with this, uh, with that movie. So you just start to see like trendy elements and stuff that were used a lot. Um, actually, now that I've gotten a little closer to my hat, I'm just gonna get the eraser and try to like clear up that hard edge that's around like the, okay. the outside of my hat a little bit, Let's see. Oops, that's a little too much. It's like really subtle, but I just see like a blue outline. Yeah, I see it too. And then as far as your um, creative journey, what really led you to the photo compositing? Um, did you start off as a photographer and then, you know, video came into play and then like, what, what did that journey look like for you? For me, I think it was really the aspect of world building. I started doing mm -hmm. photos first, um, but I always knew I wanted to get into doing video and, and mm -hmm. things like that. I always say, I'm like, I want to be Jordan Peele when I grow up. So <laughs> Jordan Peele, if you're yes. watching this, check, yes. your check your DMs. <laughs> There's already some DMs there. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Monkey Paw, check your DMs. Yes. I've been asking for a job and I sent y'all the bride. So watch my face. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, but I always wanted to do film, but for photos, I, I've, I've always just been a, again, a really big fan of like anime and world building and just like mm. that kind of like out of the box fantasy aspect of yeah. it. So out of just like a way of necessity, cause I can't afford a graphic designer right now. So I'm just yeah. like, let's figure it out. Let's go to Google and YouTube university yep. and you know, great thing about Adobe is like, they have a lot of resources and a lot of people yep. use Adobe. So yep. you can learn from um, doing, I'm just naming this real quick, Gamer mm -hmm. Set. Um, you can learn from a lot of people who have already done it. And yep. as you start to learn things, like you pick up other things. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really, it's, I guess that's really what helped me. I thought I named you Shadow too. I guess I must have. <laughs> back. I was like, I swore I named you. Um, what the heck happened? Something happened with him. I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm going crazy. Okay. I think I'm going crazy. Um, let me blend this down. I must have went back on it. Um, so yeah, I think that was really where where it started and mm -hmm. just trying to create stories and create um visuals that that are like larger than life and that yeah. are really expensive to do if you mm -hmm. try to do it all practically mm -hmm. um and i think that's where like compositing and like vfx and stuff really come in into play mm -hmm. so now you're called shadow too so next, we're actually going to chill on Gamer. And what I'm going to do just to help with the chaos is we're just going to group all of these people together. I'm just going to name you Gamer okay. for now. Um, and we're actually going to go back to our screen. Okay. I misspelled clean. Look at that. Um, <laughs> and what I want to do is I want the screen to glow. So oh, OK. All these games are going to be coming out of the screen and all of that stuff. So to really help with that effect and really help look like you're stepping into like this new world, um, I'm going to have it glow. I don't want it to affect the Game Boy SP. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is we'll just start it from like here. 
and we'll just do like a rectangle. Okay. And actually, let me do it this way because I don't even really need to affect that. Um, I just created a new layer. I'm just going to mm -hmm. do this all in the layer. <clears throat> I'm going to do, because the glow, um, essentially what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to slap a gradient on it, but we're going to have okay. it like feather and maybe add some blur. So it has like that kind of like roll off that you get from a glow. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to feather this first and then gradient, pick a color and I'm trying to go within this color palette. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just like select the color yeah try to pick up a color and see mm -hmm. and then i want something that's like not here just so it kind of sticks out and with glowing stuff like i always think of like kind of like a yellowish light so mm -hmm. we can go with that here it's pretty i like that um so let's see here since the games are going to come from left and right i'm going to have this let's see what this does Okay, that looks cool. So we're going to, that's the initial screen. And then what I'm going to do is go to blur. I'm going to try a motion blur mm -hmm. just to really get it to spread. There we go. Ah, okay. So now it's like, ooh, something's coming out of this type thing. We'll just have it at zero. Uh, so yeah i like that i feel like yeah, that looks very i love that yay um so yeah that's our screen glow um right now uh actually what i'm gonna do again back to just nintendo's love of adding outer glows to things let's add one to this game boy too so really like and it'll also give it more connection to the reason why the gamer is glowing too, I would mm -hmm. say, because it's like, oh, well, the, this is glowing. This is glowing type thing. I really like noise a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So I just added a little noise to it. Let's see if I can make this spread a little bit longer. Let's see what that looks like. That looks too sharp. Um, this side a little bit. Oop. So you just kind of like fiddle. Oh, I like that. Yeah, okay. I like that. I don't yeah, know yeah. how that happened, but let's just turn this opacity down a little bit. Okay, yeah, I like that. That looks very much like I'm looking at a magazine. Mm -hmm. So next, we actually have some more projects to open up. Um, I created like a handful of games that are going to come out each side. So I just, mm -hmm. I thought long and hard about who was going to be <laughs> I feel like Tyra Banks. Um, like there's probably like 300 of you. But in my hand, I only have <laughs> 10 photos. <laughs> so and the first person going home is like. <laughs> oh, goodness. She is a trip. Oh, she <laughs> so, really is. She really is. Shout out to Tyra. <laughs> shout out to Tyra. So um, what I'm doing, I have these games. I made 10, picked 10 of my, just my favorite childhood games. And I just went on and resized them just to help with time. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is actually create a new project. And essentially, since there's 10 games, I'm going to have them like a train. So for each one, I need it to be the equivalent of what the width of that is. So they're 540 by 540. So the okay. height is going to be 540 because it's the height. But mm -hmm. since there's 10 of them, I did the math and that's going to be 2700. OK. And we'll just call this train left or I'll just call Yeah, train left. Oof. So next, mm. we just need to insert the games that we want. So I want to do, I'm going to dedicate the left side to like the Pokemon. So we'll do Ruby and Sapphire and an Emerald. That was like the third one they brought on mm -hmm. for it. Um, I'm going to do Crash Bandicoot and Zelda. Okay for this and essentially we're just gonna copy paste so copy you take you to the train and just gonna drag you over here and then we'll do the same with sapphire take you just keep adding you here okay and let's see here emerald <laughs> 
I really want to. Well, it's so funny because when I was shooting this, I was mm. looking for my sapphire and I cannot find it. <laughs> so that's an issue. But oh. they're so expensive to buy now. If you're in really? LA, yeah. If you're in LA, um, you guys should check out a store. It's a local business called uh, Cali Games. Mm. They're out in a park called Hawthorne, but they have like all. That's where I bought my SP. Like they. It's a store full of just vintage games. Oh, and wow. These games get like, that was, I was like, you should find your pink SP because like, <laughs> I had to pay $130 for my SP. Really? Yeah, and I mean, when they came out, they were only 99. It was just still. Yeah, Nintendo, especially Nintendo games, like they they don't lose value. Mm. Um. So yeah, this is our first train. I'm gonna create our second train really quick. So we're gonna do Perfect. the same thing just with the other games of bio new perfect and if you guys are over on youtube make your way to behance b.net slash adobe live that way you can ask any questions i know we have quite a bit of y'all still in the chat um if y'all have any questions comments anything you want to share with saranda let us know let us know so who we have we have mega man mega man kingdom hearts <laughs> oh that's another one that just that's that's a ride, man. Oh, Kirby! Kirby was a big Kirby. Yeah, 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 Kirby yeah. was a big one for me. Yeah, we got them. We got them all here. We, you know, all the classics. And Sonic. Oh, I want to see. So it's so funny. I went. I was at a McDonald's because I'm basic. Um, and I didn't know they had the the Happy Meal toys for Sonic. And they um, really. Yeah, because the movie came out. Oh, the movie. Did the movie actually already come out? Yeah, I think it just came out last week. Oh, so I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> that part. I want to go see Sonic. Because um, I love Tails. Um, I've always just been a Tails mm -hmm. fan. So they actually had his... They He was the only one they had that Happy Meal toy for when I was oh, there. Wow. So I bought it. Um, <laughs> it was I only a dollar and 89 cents. I, was like, I love yeah. it. I was like, yeah, I... I gotta, you gotta treat yourself sometimes. So I'm worth it. I'm worth the dollar and 89. Yes, you're worth it. Listen, you're worth that and more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's kind of shady that I'm putting Mario last, considering he's like the Mickey Mouse of yeah. <laughs> Nintendo, but you know. It's all right. He'll be all right. right. <laughs> so we now have a that, question real yes. quickly. Um, PJ asks, are you going to animate so that it revolves around? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like a motion blur. So they're going to come out almost like, um, almost like strips coming out of each screen. Mm. So we're going to add some motion blur and blend it to really give the illusion that it's in movement, okay. but there's not actually going to be any like animation done, Got it. but Got you're going to look, it's going to look like it's shooting out of the screen essentially. Um, what I just did was I basically combined all the layers. I think it's like command shift. I don't know. My fingers just, let me do it real quick. So it's like command shift E. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. And it'll turn them on to something. Um, because we're just going to copy, oh, command option shift E does it. Um, so this is our left train. So this is kind of like an example of what I'm going to do. I'm copying this layer and we're going back to our main project. And I'm just going to paste them here for now. Mm -hmm. And actually, let me go ahead and get the right train, too, while we're at it. Where am I at? I'm sorry, my little screen recording is, like, right on top of it. So like, <laughs> uh, to the right, to the right. Or am I to the right? Next one, next one. Yeah, that Okay, one. thank there you. I was go. like, I can't see. <laughs> um, so now that they're just here, essentially, this side is going to come out this train's going to come out from this side. This is going to come out from this side. Okay. Let me hide. Let me name you. Your train left, right? Okay, yeah, we'll call you train left. Oh, Misty said, I just got a Happy Meal last night. Um, I thought I was going to get a Sonic toy, but I got a Fred bobblehead from Scooby. I got, <laughs> I'm like, Fred. I got ripped off. Ooh. <laughs> well, no, no shade to, to Scooby. I was just like, what are they promoting to have Happy Meals? Huh. It's the way you said Fred. Fred. <laughs> no, I wanted Sonic. I want Knuckles. Dude. Um, no, that so, would upset me too. <laughs> yeah, especially in the in the box probably has Sonic all over it. So that's, that's weird. 
Um, what I did, I just did the transform. So we're doing perspective. Okay. Um, and what this is going to do is really oh. give it like a 3D vibe. Obviously, it's way too big. It's, it's going to get bigger as we like do it. But I really want to like stretch it, really make it look campy. We'll aim it for the center. And then I'm just going to resize it to make sure that like it fits. So mm -hmm. actually, he may be a little too like raise this a little bit yeah there we go but i really want to make sure the game boy part of it is still in view so let's see just bring you up a little bit boom boom i like it and just to make it easier i'm just going to get the train this one in place too they're probably not going to be like exact because I just I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> but I'm just going to eye it and get it as close as I can to make sure these look like they're coming equally from other directions. Mm -hmm. And moving a little faster, I'm just resizing. Oh, no, I don't want Mario to lead the way. I did it. I made an uh oh. So I really <laughs> want Sonic in them. Yeah, I see. You wanted to see. <laughs> So we actually need to go back to our train and redo this. So I'm just moving, I'm just gonna shift everyone over. So Sonic, Mario, you go here. Sonic, Mega Man, Kirby. And this is actually an order of like, well, I don't know. I can't really say this is an order of my favorites out of this because mm -hmm. the first three are like really hard mm -hmm. to like this to pick. Okay, cool. I like there that we better. go. So now Sonic will lead the way. So we're gonna copy him, go here, paste him. There we go. So let's bring that perspective back. And it's gonna make you bigger. Make you smaller. Boom. This size. This is just a lot of like back and forth you essentially have to do. Um, and let's just distort you. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I'm Up trying to eye everything. Yeah. Let's see. a little off there we go um i could probably bring this one in a little bit more on the distort maybe about right there and then i mm -hmm. think sonic needs to be a little bit more like raw. okay there we go okay. i'm happy with that so oops let's let's name <laughs> right um so next, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to duplicate this and I'm going to do, and this is, I should have did this from the jump. Y'all make sure you convert things into smart objects. Uh, yeah. Make your life easier. Just do yeah. it. <laughs> so I'm going to convert that into a smart object and we are going to add motion blur again. So uh, actually, before I get into that, let me hide this because I really want to make sure Okay, cool. So now we're gonna do the motion blur. And this is what's gonna help give us that. Ooh, that's a lot of blur. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get it. No, it probably does need to go left and right because the image originally was. You know what it reminds me of? You remember like the Disney Channel original movie mm -hmm. opening that let's watch a Disney Channel <laughs> yeah. movie? And the kids are like, ah! like that's what <laughs> way that would get oh disney <laughs> so hyped disney channel they really gosh and they were singing down for that song mm -hmm. too like <laughs> vocals let's watch a disney channel move. yeah yeah they have them <laughs> singing um yeah so we can't see um oop. i can't really see it there we go um so what i'm gonna do is just kind of let me see if I can get it to catch it <laughs> Francisco asked if anybody remembers the even Stevens um musical absolutely yes absolutely. you know um 
she has a smart filter supply this there be turned off to early okay there we go um who was Ren? She has like a YouTube channel. Now. She does. She and does. she's always just like spilling tea about <laughs> it's not like messy, but she's it's just she's cool still- to hear. <laughs> she's always just giving um uh, just cool like things that we mm-hmm. would not have known because we weren't in that world about yep. what what it was like to be on that network. Yep. Shout out, shout out to Ren. Subscribe. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna promote everyone here. So this is what I'm going to give me a moment, barely. <laughs> so subscribe. I don't know. Subscribe. Okay, I mean, subscribe. She, she, you know, uh, it's funny. a good channel. It's a good channel. It's a good channel. Check her out. Check her out. Check her out. Um, <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I added a mask to the top one, essentially because these edges are so like big. I'm just going mm-hmm. to, um, oops, my opacity. So, I'm just gonna like graze if I can figure out like um graze out the um what is up with me and this mask today? I am hmm. just like not figuring out these brushes. But once I figure it out, we're just gonna mask out the corners of it okay. so that they can um kind of blend more so with the blur. Let me do this again. My brush is, oh, it's just so small. I can't see my stroke. There we okay. go. I was okay. like. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There now we go. See it. So we're going to turn this uh, opacity down quite a bit. Nah, not that much. And I could probably come out a little wider. Something else I've been learning is like, some things you probably shouldn't go so close so into. So close, yes. Because yes. it'll, I don't know. You got to see like the bigger picture of it. Mm-hmm. We got to find a bigger picture. That's that's a life motto. Life motto. Find the bigger um, picture. Yeah, because exactly. If you're too caught up in seeing things like so close up, then when you, you zoom out, then you're going to realize sometimes it looks a little off. So it's better mm-hmm. to take it from the perspective of the full image than getting all, all up in those pixels, you know? Exactly. So I'm still just like finding a good um, like length there we go that'll like blend it in Mm -hmm. so i'm just taking it on the edge it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just it's already moving so fast Mm -hmm. and this will just help it blend with the back a little bit more so now it looks a little bit more like it's coming out Mm -hmm. let me go a little harder on the front just because it's more detailed let's see I don't like the way that looks. Um, and the good thing about masking is you can always undo things. So switch that a little closer. Boom. Okay, that looks cool. Let me come a little closer here. Really get rid of that edge. Clean it up up here. There we go. Yeah. Oops. Select it there. And I'm just kind of getting closer in the detail. You know what? Let me turn my hardness down a little bit. That'll probably help a little bit too. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, that looks really nice. All right. So next, and I'll probably tweak out it a little bit more. I wonder mm-hmm. if I can get this corner a little bit. No, I don't like the way that no, I'm not mad at it actually. Um, what we're going to do is actually add a uh, depth of fill to this too. Okay. So it really kind of helps it look like it's coming out. So um, doing this, I go to blur gallery, fill blur, and we're going to add points. And this is also a really good tool to use <clears throat> if you're taking portraits and stuff and you really just want to just give it more of like that just dramatic feel. So um mm. It does a really great job. Um, So essentially what you're doing is you're adding pins to each part and you're just adjusting the level of blur. 
So uh. obviously the, the ruby and sapphire would be more in focus. This would be a little bit out of focus. And then this would just be like super duper out of focus. Mm-hmm. So let's see what that does. And I mean, you can really pick. I, I want the games to be visible enough. So I think I'll kind of go with that. And see what that I love that. I didn't even know that was a thing. It's a really cool feature. Oh, wow. um, let me do a little bit more tweaking with this mess too and then um miles said um that you've been an inspiration since high school love seeing your work thanks for adobe for hosting miles yo <laughs> i know miles you know when you when it's just miles when you're just hearing it you're like oh okay miles yo. miles bolden yep <laughs> Shout out north garland high school man <laughs> that was a uh that was a school the writers go right <laughs> Yo, what's up, Miles? Um, yeah, I like that better. So we're yeah, gonna do dope. that same thing. And also these games are ultra saturated. So once I'm done with this second one, I'm gonna desaturate them and kind of just make them look more like they're coming out. They're just attached to the rest of this. Mm-hmm. So what we're gonna do again is I'm gonna duplicate my train. We're mm-hmm. going to hide this bottom one and I'm going to create a motion blur yes a motion blur and the settings should still be the same so i shouldn't have to do anything yep and then we'll just put the top Mm -hmm. and i'm going to distort you a little bit boom okay cool actually that just let me see that sonic is still a bit not totally in balance. There we go. Yeah. So again, I'm going to mask out the top one just to really blend in the, whatchamacallit, brush, turn it on black. Oh yeah, left train is not giving me problems. You see that? <laughs> Look at that right train. This is how this is how it was supposed to go. This is how it was supposed to go, but the other one was acting some kind of way. Seriously, probably because it's Pokemon. It's a Diva, <laughs> you know, like they're like, oh well, we're the highest selling Nintendo <laughs> game ever. So yeah, like we're gonna listen, be able to... listen. Humble yourself. You exactly. Know? <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that blend is so much better. Oh, thank you. Um. I think I'm going to connect this edge a little bit more on that. For some reason, it looks so weird. Okay, so next we're going to add that fill blur again, just to give it the same Mm -hmm. amount. So fill blur. We're actually almost done, too. Mm -hmm. Um, We're getting there. So I'm going to do these three points. And actually, that's a point, so I can... Do this, blur, um, turn you all the way down. Yeah, that this um, um, blur that you're doing right now is probably the biggest takeaway I'm taking right now because I did not know this existed. I only recently found out about it, but I love when you find a like an effect that you're like, this is about to change. Listen, this could change the game. Exactly. And especially when you mentioned doing it on per- portraits. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, you if you know, you maybe want it just to be a little bit more dramatic, like yeah. you can add it, but it looks I'm not a sometimes I'm not a fan of like digital depth of field. Yeah. I can't yeah. say their word. The the it's that fruit brand. I don't want to mm-hmm. say it because also I want to work with them. So I'd like, <laughs> you know that brand with the yeah. fruit. Um <laughs> But they have a feature where they kind of do it and I don't like it because it doesn't look Mm -hmm. real to me. And I always tell my friends, like, you know, I'm your friend when I'm like unsoliciting, like met texting you with like feedback about your your content. Like, I bully all my friends about that. I'm like, um, yeah, I saw you post that. And and I'll tell them, like, yeah, I don't don't do that. Like Mm -hmm. that effect because it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got them again. I want to desaturate these a mm-hmm. little bit because they just look actually. Ooh, ooh, I did not mean to do that. Um, 
actually what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to open this up in camera raw filter and just so I have a little bit more control over what it's looking like. Okay. This is normally like if I'm doing a portrait and stuff, this is where I do all the coloring. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, it, it's pretty much like if you're a Lightroom fiend and also this is exposing Sonic, he's still out of bounds. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I'm just kind of muting these just to really make it look faded and like yeah. it just like age. So let me like bump up the blue. Actually, what I'll do is, yeah, I'll bump up yeah. this blue. Maybe kind of. There you go. Yeah. So he's good. And then let me just. No, he's not out of bounds. I don't know. Okay. And we'll do the same thing for this side. Filter. Wrong thing. Camera. There we go. So again, I'm really just going to the curve, like bring you up. And drag you. That looks crazy. Um, this picture is just like a little bit more. There we go. And we will bump that up a little bit. Mm. See how he measures. Probably should have. Uh, no, I didn't convert it. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So we got them blasting out. Um, what I want to do next is. Actually, I want to add in that other Game Boy because he's just been mm, chilling for a minute. He has been chilling. So this one, because there's like a lot of little moving parts, it was so much to get this thing to be to be in the position that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do the pin selection and we'll just select it out. But I'm gonna have to cover out probably like the reflections. I'll cover out like my finger mm -hmm. and the dark piece that came from the tripod and stuff like that. So um, let's see here. Just selecting. And this is what I love about like editing photos versus video because on a day, like I'm just like doing a lot of keying and stuff. I've mm -hmm. got music playing like I've got <laughs> podcasting and tv Netflix on in the background and when you're like doing video you have to be so, so like, yeah you have to listen to stuff unless you're like coloring it and stuff but 90% mm -hmm. so of the time you like gotta ah, listen it yep gotta listen so it's like quiet and it's just like you're in your room yeah I find um, it very difficult to edit videos because of that I just can't get myself to just listen. I need something. It's like, <laughs> like it's bad. It's bad. I mean, it, it's just, it takes so much like concentration and you do, mm -hmm. you'll edit like three seconds of the video. You're like, woo, I need to get some <laughs> Starbucks. Yep, like, yep. I think we're done for today. And you realize you've only done like two seconds of the video. <laughs> um, something happened. Let me just do, let me pull this back a little bit. I lost my connection on there. Oh, Eric said, too bad I don't live in Cali. Can't wait to work for that fruit brand. Look, job security. Job um, security. <laughs> no, nah, I want to, yeah, no, they're, they're on my list. Also, y'all, and this is just some, like, while we're pinning things, write a list. I don't mm -hmm. care what, what industry you're in. You could be a teacher. You could be a real estate agent. You could be a photographer. Write a list of mm -hmm. just brands things you want to do and don't put too much emphasis on it actually I watched a um an interview Oprah did like a while ago I think she was mm -hmm. promoting the the wrinkle in time movie mm -hmm. and um an interviewer asked her it was like one of those like press rounds where everyone was just like in the same room type thing mm -hmm. but the interviewer was just like you know I, she's like, this is a full circle moment for me because I have always wanted to interview you. You're on my mood board. And she's like, asked Oprah and it was like Oprah, Mandy from like the Mandy project. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like Reese Witherspoon or somebody, I don't know. 
but they were just like uh, she asked she's like you know do you write do you use mood boards or do you still create mm-hmm. mood boards or anything and like Reese and Mandy were like yeah like I do them all the time and um Oprah was like I used to do them I don't do them anymore um she's like I kind of just say what I want and I just um or she'll kind of notate what she wants but she Mm -hmm. doesn't really revisit it she just Mm -hmm. kind of does enough because when you put too much thought into it and stuff it kind of like resists a little bit but I do that every year I'll make a list of just companies brands or just maybe goals that I want to accomplish yeah not not even just goals because more so dreams Mm because goals are supposed to be measurable Mm -hmm. um but you can't measure if you're gonna get to work for the fruit brand or whatever (laughs) (laughs) you know you can't really create an action plan of like okay this is how I'm gonna work for them um but what you do is you just make that list and you put it somewhere and you may look at it again you don't but just the process of like writing it is yeah it's huge uh, yeah a lot of stuff just goes on in your brain it's honestly really fun to do and very motivating but you'd be surprised like how much it sits in your brain like subconsciously and you start acting and you start making sure the decisions you are making and the choices you're making for your Mm -hmm. career or creatively are like aligning you with it like yeah you know I can't I don't know if I'm gonna get to work for the the fruit brand right now however um I can make sure like shooting tech content or being shooting yeah. the product that they use their yeah. phone I don't know stuff like that so just no, a little it's so true you have to be able to like because sometimes you don't you might you don't realize how much you want to do or how much like what how big your dreams are until you sit down and like really ask yourself okay what is it that you want to do and give Absolutely. yourself that space to just kind of dream and write and and I don't know, just kind of write something that might seem realistic, something that might not. Like what does it matter? Whatever it is, big or small, being able to call it all out. Absolutely. It's it's a fun task. Y'all should mm-hmm. that's y'all's homework today outside yes. of like buy a SP as well. Like let's play <laughs> SPs today and also we need your goals. Yes. Um, See, Eric said that um they want to work with Call of Duty Mobile. See? call it out call it out call it out and i love it i love it call of duty is such that's a game i really need to get into um oh, but I i'm was afraid really, oh <laughs> <laughs> people are wild on that game man it's wild i used to fix him <laughs> you do you do i used to play call of duty like um growing up like with my cousins and stuff and I would play with them and then I would play with like strangers and like, I, I just couldn't stomach it. I, it I, is, I was too weak. <laughs> it is a lot. I, I play Fortnite a lot. I don't know why. Mm. I'm very childish, but I'll play Fortnite. <laughs> I just mute the mics. I don't hear what anyone's saying, but mm-hmm. I'll do like the Fortnite and all of that. Um, I'm going to put this. So I just finished King, uh, doing the pen. So I'm just going to put this at zero and then we'll go to just the refine the select the mask and really okay that's not too shabby Mm-mm, not too shabby um, at all a little feather there and what we're gonna do is we'll inverse the selection get rid of everyone mm-hmm. and i'm just gonna copy you and put you over here so and i can actually show like a quick reference of what I mean but like on the commercials and stuff you can always see like there's a Game Boy on the bottom corner Mm -hmm. or they just did it all the time so that's more so what I'm doing that is that attention to detail yeah they always just have one there's a lot going on on the bottom of my image so I'm gonna put them on the top right like Mm -hmm. right here and then we're gonna add that good old-fashioned outer glow actually put him on top Let's name you GBASP. And I'm just going to add an outer glow. What am I looking at? Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. What am I doing? Who am I? Where? Am I? <laughs> I just forgot for a second. Oh, that looks so yes. cool. I like it. So it's just, I like the opacity. I kind of, let's see if I lower the spread. Yeah. 
cool. So we got him chilling up there. And I'm also going to insert the logo. Nintendo, don't sue us. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put that logo right here. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, so yeah, I just got a transparent image of it, mm -hmm. and really just gonna select this something, scale you down, and we'll just put you center placement. And again, I'm gonna add a glow. Mm -hmm. And once I add the glow, I'll really be able to kind of better align it and see it's a little too much so let's turn down the size no it's not enough cool so we'll move you a little bit more over here and move you a little bit see how that looks overall i actually think it's too big um a little smaller and make it a little smaller. Okay, I like that. So we're looking like an ad so far. Yes. Um, what I want to do <laughs> is I think I'm going to add a bit more glow to the gamer. So let's just boost that spread a little bit. Not too much. Oh, and you know what? I just had an idea. Let's do this. I'm going to delete these effects from you. Just to, ooh, just to really play off of kind of that motion blurry movement that's coming from the games. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tie it in with the gamer <laughs> too. Because I feel like the gamer is really like a cool bridge to everything that's going on like yeah. the glow he's connected to the glow we should connect him with some of the movement too yes so i'm gonna go real dramatic with it and then maybe give it a little bit of an angle perfect yeah i love adding i love that you just added that and let's just see what the blend does Ooh, it just ooh, that was nice who was that soft light okay and then I'll just turn the opacity down just a bit. Perfect. Just so it looks like he has some stuff going on. Also kind of gives some reflection vibe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like looks mm -hmm. like he's kind of reflecting on the material. Um, what I'm going to do next is add the font. And then we'll really just start tweaking and just doing like fine tuning stuff and finessing. That's actually a learn. Shout out to a gaffer I worked with. He said that word when we were on set one day, he's like, Oh, we're just finessing the light. It, Cause mm. they were done with it, but they're just like, now we're just having fun. So I was like, Oh, I like that word. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my new word. There you go. Finesse that light. <laughs> Something that I, I feel like is one of my, just like my kryptonite is like, font <laughs> mm. i'm always just there's just so much science to font and that's just a world like typography is a world but it's a huge world yeah it's it's crazy so i did some research just to try to figure out like what font i want to use mm. and there was a film shout out to a friend of mine cody who put me onto a film called Hackers. They're just mm. like, I feel like you're going to like this movie. But Hackers, <laughs> it came out in 1995, obviously like a whole decade before this whole thing happened. But mm -hmm. it was actually Angelina Jolie's like second movie. It oh, is a vibe. Wow. It is a fashion film. But it's about like these teen hackers in New York. And uh, I, it's one of my favorite movies. I mean, it wasn't well received, but those are always the best mm. ones. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, um, I love that movie. And I actually end up going looking in more into the font of that because they were really mm -hmm. dealing with like cyber and like it gave you a y2k vibe before y2k like really mm -hmm. like pivoted and became a thing of the 2000s but um the font is called ocra and it's actually a font i got off of um adobe font so ah. yeah it's licensed they have a few options i got all i added all three and we can just like play with it um but the title of this one is again i'm gonna do lower caps it's called new stage oops not new dot stage new stage 
same classics. Mm. And I thought, I don't know, it also, I, it took me forever to figure out like what to call this thing, what to call the ad, but I meant like stage. Cause you know, when you play video games and it's like, oh, you're on a new level, new stage. Mm. Like you're on the next. So I okay. meant that kind of playing off of the, like we're on a stage cause I'm on this Game Boy, but mm-hmm. also like we're going into this new stage. I love that. But it's the same classics that you've already known. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, this feels like an ad. So we're just going to put him single, uh, put it center. And again, I'm going to add some glow. Add that glow. You know, and let's just see. I may darken the font a little bit just so it um, make it white. And I really want to play with the noise on it. Oh, it's already got quite a bit of noise. Let's just boost the size. And noise and maybe play mm. with the opacity yeah there we go i always forget about opacity i'm like it's just not popping enough and then i was like oh because so opacity is at like two <laughs> um so that'll help you out you know yeah push it out a little bit more and i'm gonna make the font a little bit more yellow now that i have that white surrounding it um here let's just play with the saturation let's see what right there does okay cool oh wow now that i'm looking now that i've been had some time away from this train sonic and them look a little like they could be coming no you know what i think it's pokemon something i don't I'm not feeling something about it so i'm gonna yeah just i think i'm gonna pull you a little bit more this way and then move that motion blur a little bit too. It's mm. gonna do it. Um, LOL, me being like, let's use convert to smart filters, and then it's like giving me drama. Um, <laughs> it feels a little heavy. It feels a little heavy. like there's more of it there yeah, than this. Yeah, exactly. So. What I'll do is um, I'm going to create a mask. That'll probably be the easiest thing. And we'll just like brush it away. Mm. In the words of Solange. Well, she didn't say I tried to brush it away, but I tried to brush it away. <laughs> um, let's see here. It's kind of, it's pretty close on the edge of that one. So I'm just kind of going yeah. like in a circular motion and then... Let's just see what that does. I like it. And yeah. you know what? I'm gonna add some noise. It wouldn't be vintage if it didn't have noise and grain. Exactly. So we're gonna add some noise to the screen. Yes. It's a bit too clean. Oh, that's too, oh, that's too much, but that I like that concept. Yeah. Let's see, what does uniform do? I kind of like uniform better. Yeah, that just adds a little bit more texture to it. And I think I'm gonna do it to my gamer too just so he blends in just a little bit more Mm -hmm. um some noise be real subtle with it let's see it's too much be like see what four does and then this is just a test but um let me see what uh a Gaussian blur would do just to put him a little bit. He's not just so he's not so sharp. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Dope, dope, dope. So also, what I'm going to do, I really want this to look like it was a um, like scanned image or something. Mm-hmm. So. I got this texture from Adobe Stock. Shout out to Adobe Stock. Shout out to Adobe Stock. And it actually gave you, gives you like three in one. Um, so we can play with each one and just see what it does. Like better. Yeah. Um, but what I will do, no, we're good. Uh, we'll figure it out over there. So we'll go here. I'm just gonna paste you on top. These images are pretty big. I'm just going to scale it up and mm-hmm. kind of just slide it over. That would probably be the fastest way yeah, just to, to be see able... the, to see what works best. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to come out a little bit. 
just go you there. But I really love like scan lines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, just go to blending and just see what these pages do. Screen seems to do. Oh, I like color dodge. Um, let's see. Lighter color. Did I do anything? I don't see anything from that one. Mm -hmm. um, I think color dodge is going to be the winner. Yeah, because now it's starting to, ooh. ooh. I think that's a little too dramatic for me. Yeah. I'm never, like, I've been trying to play with, like, adding textures on top of stuff more. Mm -hmm. But I've always just liked things clean, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, all right, if we do this, like, I'm just going to have to turn this opacity down. So yeah. I want it there just enough. But I feel like as creators, especially when we, do something new for the first time we overdo it yeah like i feel like yeah. that's everything in life in general like if yep. you look back at yourself 10 years ago like you're like i was doing the most <laughs> and now you you know you're still that person but you're just a little bit more refined and you're mm -hmm. just like okay i realize i don't have to go that heavy on this yep. so yep. i feel like i like 32 because it's enough to wear it gives it that texture. I love these lines, which yeah. is really well to see. And um, let's just see what before and after that's doing. Yeah, I like that. So um, let's see, what else do we have going on with this? I think I'm gonna add a bit of, of noise on these images too, cause they're very much mm. like straight out of Google. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and it was surprisingly very hard to find these pictures. Like, really? I figured they would be easy. I'm like, oh, just Google. Yeah. No, no. they were so hard to find. If, yeah. Or people want to slap their little watermarks on. I'm like, you mm. didn't make this game. <laughs> yeah, that makes it look a lot more. Yeah, it looks more. Um, just connected. Yes. Um, so let's do the same with Sonic. Connected and vintage. Mm -hmm. Vintage. Let's do the same with them. Man, I can't wait to go watch that Sonic movie. Oh. The first one, I felt, well, the first one came out like right when right, the pandemic yeah. happened. So I think mm -hmm. it just didn't get, we had bigger fish to fry. Yeah. So um, they were so good. And then they got Knuckles. I think like Idris Elba is doing Knuckles' voice uh, and stuff. And Tails is in it. And then someone told me that like Jim Carrey, this may be like his last thing or something yeah. like that. I that heard that me, too. It makes me kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has nothing to prove. I know. Anymore. And like, you've I done know. what you're gonna do. So I think that's and I think that's why it's his life. He's like, I've done more than enough. But he's such a good Eggman that I'm just like, uh, I was gonna try to get rid of. I don't know for some reason I'm not feeling that little speck, but yeah, I don't know if I can get rid of it. It's coming from the texture, but mm -hmm. it's also like, oh, uh, okay. What I'll try to do, I thought maybe clone stamping it could work, but I may let's see what it is. erase it? Yeah, they're okay. so minor that you're not gonna see that. Mm. Like it's visibly clear. So I'm just cleaning that up just a bit. Yeah, right here. Oh no, for some reason I can really see him. Um let's see. Okay, I'm just gonna leave you alone. A little tap. Ooh, there we go. Um, let's see if there's any other little ones. Let's see if it's good in those corners. Tighten that up a little bit. Yep. Pretty much. Um. We are done at this point nintendo um, or if somebody from nintendo is watching please make sure you hit up your boy <laughs> hire your boy i hire I've him been, i've been to japan twice i will go a third time give Listen. me a reason to go because they're still not letting people in ah uh, yeah <laughs> i want to go so bad um but i yeah. love this so again with this one this was more of like a campier mm -hmm. it's coming out of a magazine vibe so i really kind of wanted it to just be over the top but um also kind of introduce what was like different about this one so yeah. we kind of had the backlight glowing it's again saying it's the new stage and all of that and then yep. 
tomorrow we're going to, there's still some campiness and stuff that I want to play off of it, but tomorrow I'm, I've got one image that I feel like is a little bit more like editorial E okay. and fashion E and then another one that's kind of like kind of cheeky and campy that I think will be fun to play with. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm excited for that. Serena, thank you so much for showing us this so far. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Put some You're love fun. in the chat if you enjoyed it, of what you learned from today's session. I still, what was that blur tool again? I need to write it down. Oh, uh, oh yeah, let's do it. So it's radio. So we did motion blur and then blur gallery, field blur. Ah, and field blur. Okay. With that, you have like there's some options. You could do some like spinning thing. There's mm -hmm. some cool things. So yeah, make sure to play with that. Yes, and I just really love the overall. Um, you adding the 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 grain and the noise really makes it kind of look like it came from that time, and it follows that. I don't know. It just looks aligned with the branding. So ten of you're watching. Your boy is really paying attention to detail. <laughs> Make sure you guys go ahead and check out Serenit's website. Um, follow him on uh, uh, Instagram, TikTok, et cetera. Also head over to YouTube so you can watch his short film. Serena, what was the name of the short film again? Here Comes the Bride. Here Comes Stream the it. Bride. It's a good like sit down, get some popcorn and be ready to be spooked. What, what kind of, real quickly, what inspired you to do that film? So I, it's, we did a spec of it the for 2018 during halloween and mm -hmm. i was literally walking to the gym i heard this song by like an indie artist and it was so romantic mm -hmm. and maybe that weekend before i met this girl named reese shout out to reese if you're watching this um we met at like some party thing mm -hmm. and i just loved her energy she was just had this poise mm -hmm. about her and for some reason i was like this would be the perfect song to kill somebody too mm. <laughs> so then I was like but I want to try different songs so I did can't take my eyes off of you by like Frankie mm -hmm. Valley Lauren Hill mm -hmm. and we made the first like spec video we literally used that song and told the story over the song and it got a good response so I ended up writing out and doing like a, a GoFundMe and stuff and we put oh, together wow. like a full film but it's about a I like it because it, it really flips the script. So it's about mm -hmm. a, a woman who is a serial killer. She basically manipulates men into marrying her mm -hmm. and then she kills them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot into it. Like it's it's a lot. And you're really like diving into like her brain and mm -hmm. both of the films are connected, even though the first one is like a lot shorter, like I wanted to connect them and do mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's fun. If you like watching like you and stuff like that, yes. I think you're going to watch this. And then it's a woman doing it, which makes it even funner because it's usually <laughs> always like the man. Yeah. You're like American Psycho and stuff. I feel like you're going to like it. So All make right, sure you I feel that. Out. And shout out to Jordan Peele. So make sure he go ahead. Jordan and Peele, <laughs> call me. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, Quentin Tarantino, like y'all, yes. if you're watching this, all of y'all, give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> awesome thank you so much saranda so make sure y'all head over to youtube that way you can watch here comes the vibe and then just a few things for y'all make sure that you will be for one we'll be back tomorrow at 9 30 a.m pacific with part two with saranda as he's going to continue with some creative ads and, and, and editing in photoshop and so we'll be back tomorrow if you missed today's session just go ahead and head over to youtube or be hands that way you can rewatch everything um and then continuing the logos theme um, stick around for a creative encore of the Illustrated Creative Challenges, where you will learn how to create and use logos and app. Um, this is going to be immediately following the Illustrated Creative Challenge. Join Sarah Lagingi. I'm so proud of I said that incorrectly, <laughs> at 12 p.m. Pacific time, and learn how to create your branding and packaging for your business. So I can't wait to see y'all tomorrow. Sarah, and thank you so much again, and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you, Dar. I will see y'all tomorrow. Yes. Bye. Bye.